tonight on Reporting Scotland. The cone controversy tonight. A protest group to save the cone gathers at the Duke of Wellington statue in Glasgow as confusion reigns over what the council is planning. If you walk past the statue and there is a cone on it, it just feels as though there's something wrong. There's something wrong with the day when that happens. So there needs to be a cone on it at all times. I think that should be a new, uh, a new council policy. Now, it's a story about a statue with a traffic cone on its head. But unbelievably, the saga of the Duke of Wellington's irreverent headgear has caused a rift within Scotland's biggest local authority and an outcry from members of the public. Live now to Katrina Renton, who can bring us up to date with Conegate. Well, Jackie, let me tell you, you can see this evening that there is no cone up on top of the Duke of Wellington's head this evening, but there's been no end of controversy, as I said it, over the last 24 hours. Now, what's emerged over the last day is that there's an enormous amount of support to keep the cone. There was even a party here earlier this evening, and I must warn you that my report contains some flash photography. As the legend goes, around 30 years ago, a drunken student climbed up and put a traffic cone on the Duke of Wellington's head. Since then, it's become a tradition for pranksters and revellers. Now, the statue has its own Wikipedia page. It's made it into the Lonely Planet's guide of must-see sites. There are cards, mugs, fridge magnets. In fact, it's something that's become synonymous with Glasgow. But the council said this presented a depressing image of the city and put forward proposals to raise the plinth to stop it. As word got out, there was a social media explosion. Thousands signed an online petition, a Facebook page got more than 66,000 likes and they also organised a rally. And the cone got its own Twitter account. This former Lord Provost was so proud of the cone, his staff had this picture drawn of him. We, when we were launching Glasgow Scotland with style, we came down here to launch it and the cone wasn't there and I said, I'm not doing it till the cone's on. And we went away and we came back and the cone was on and we done it. And it get, hits all over the place. I mean, all over the world people were, were talking about it and people come to take photographs of it. There was no cone this morning, but it seemed like there was a reprieve when the council put out a statement saying the wording of the report was appalling and the leader of the council has instructed officials to withdraw the planning application. But now it seems the issue has not gone away at all. Some of the language in the report about being negative, the Wellington statue, doesn't correlate with the politicians' thoughts. So in the short term, we're pulling the report and we're going to look at other options for investment in the statue and also address public safety as part of that. Save the code. This story has captured the public's imagination so much that this evening there was a party. Its message, keep the code. If you walk past the statue and there isn't a cone on it, it just feels as though there's something wrong. There's something wrong with the day when that happens. I want to save the cone because I've got a sense of humour. Glasgow City Council hasn't. Give it protected status and get the cone in the head. And another twist this evening. I spoke to the council a few minutes ago and they tell me that when they resubmit their planning application, they will definitely not be asking to raise the plinth. They will continue to remove the cone at £100 a time. And what about a permanent cone? Well, that's not an option because they'd need listed building consent to be continued, Jackie. £100 a time, Katrina, thank you.